Uh, my name is Ben Bayer, and I am a fellow with the Ayn Rand Institute, and I'm organizing a project called The Atlas Project. This is uh, sponsored by the Ayn Rand Institute in celebration of the 60th anniversary of the publication of Atlas Shrugged 60 years ago, 1957. Started and came out in October of 1957. We're going to be starting the project on September 2nd. And what it is, is a weekly chapter by chapter reading group where, uh, and Greg, maybe you want to put the, yes, the, the, the URL back up on the screen. If you join this Facebook group, you will be able to participate in the reading group. You'll get discussion questions on a weekly basis that you can think about for yourself, talk about with friends, or talk about with people in the group. And then we're going to be having a, a session just like this on Facebook Live every week where we talk about these questions, we talk about possible answers, we consider feedback that we've gotten from uh, readers over the course of the week. Uh, Greg and I have taught courses in universities on Atlas Shrugged before, and we're going to be bringing some of our experience doing that uh, and our experience having read the book many times. But we're especially interested in relating to the experience of people who are reading it for the first time, because it is a mystery story, uh, not just an ordinary mystery story. It's a philosophical mystery story. And uh, so there's a, a no cardinal, a cardinal rule of no spoilers that we'll be enforcing throughout the whole project. And I'll just remind everybody that uh, we are giving away a free copy of Atlas Shrugged to 10 lucky people. And Greg, maybe you should put that uh, up one more time. Here's uh, the address. This is just a Google Docs form. And if you fill this out, give us your address. We're going to give 10 copies away by the end of this broadcast. And maybe people didn't hear that before. Uh, when I announced it the first time because my audio wasn't working. But Greg will keep that URL up uh, for the time being. Somehow, Greg, one person did already uh, ask for a copy. Uh, maybe they just went to the, UR to the URL uh, reflexively. They might have read your sign. So, they could see you. Or, or, well, it's a good thing we've got signs and not just mics. Uh, I should also mention, since maybe now is a good time to transition into the major topic that we wanted to talk about tonight, that there are a lot of other ways to get copies of the book that we're going to be reading. And just in case we give away uh, all 10 of our free copies tonight, another place that you can go to get free copies is this website. And I think Greg has a URL for that as well, freeobjectivistbooks.com. This is an organization that's run by... Uh, some people we know it's not a it's not part of the Ayn Rand Institute but it's a the third party uh that has just decided that they would like to spend time giving away free books uh by Ayn Rand and of course one of them that you can ask for is Atlas Shrugged if you go there we encourage you to tell them in some way or another that you heard about them through the Atlas Project that you're intending to use the book for the Atlas Project and that'll probably uh as far as I know up the priority for them uh, for getting it to you quickly Same and thing, uh, there, there may even be a place where you can sort of tell them your story about what book you want and why you want it and my understanding right. is they changed around how they do things a little recently but that the way the service works is largely by matching people who want books with donors who are uh, have books to give away so um, if the donors are interested in this project and want to read along the book with you read the book along with you in the project and that might encourage them to prioritize their request. And I should mention that although the uh, the deal that we're doing tonight where we give away 10 free books is primarily intended for students, I don't believe that that is a requirement for freeobjectivistbooks.com. Now, they prefer to give them to students, but if you if you tell the right kind of story, you might be able to get one even if you're not. So somebody on here uh, said, I'm a student for life. Uh, and so, uh, Bruce, you might be the one to go to uh, Free Objectivist Books if you're looking for a, a copy for life and of life i'd imagine Bruce. yeah so uh, and by the way i should take this opportunity to encourage people who are watching right now to if you have questions about the project and you're watching go ahead and type a question in the comment box in the facebook live feed and i'll be monitoring these as we discuss things and i'll try to see what you write and see if we can answer it Greg, we were going to spend some time talking about uh, selecting editions of the book to read. And uh, there really are a lot of different ways to read this book, which is, and, and some of them, you know, make it very easy for you to do, uh, which is helpful because it's a very long book. And that's something will be, uh, that's part of the reason we need eight months to do this project. We go from September to April, basically. But 
Uh, do you want to get started out by talking about uh, about preferred copies of the book to use yeah. if you're going to join the Atlas Project and read along yeah. with us for eight week, eight months? Angela asked what it was, and I'm just reminding her. A bunch of people online uh, have asked, what version of the book should I read? And you know, the short answer is any version. Uh, I mean, any you know published official copy of the book that's legal and cheap uh, is fine. But just so you know what versions are out there and how it works, I thought I'd just run through them, especially because the pagination in the versions is a little different, and uh, we might have cross-talk where one person's pointing you to another passage, to one passage and you read another. So here is the, the first edition of the book. This is what was published 60 years ago in October of 1957. And the hardcover book has been in print uh, continually since then. So here's the, the first edition, and it's just uh, continued to be in print. We have, here's an edition I bought in the 90s, here with uh, this cover by, I forget the name of this artist, Nick Giano, I think. Here's one from the Gaetano. It has a, Gaetano, has a reproduction of the original cover. Uh, these are both hard covers. And all throughout this time, the pagination in the hardcover has been exactly the same as it was in the very original version. Um, the, the front matter has changed, an introduction was added, and so forth. But if you go to a given page of the novel, it'll start the same way. And that's true of all the hard covers that you'll find, uh, with whatever the cover they might have on them. And it's also true of what are called the trade paperback versions, which are books that are the size of hard covers, uh, but they have soft covers. And you can find that with at least two different covers, this Nick Gaetano cover and this facsimile of the first edition. Um, Greg, someone says you other, should bump your volume up a little bit, by the way. Uh, one other version that uh, has the same pagination as these is uh, just recently Penguin uh, released a Upside down. World modern classics uh, series. Uh, and it's got Atlas Shrugged in it with this uh, Art Deco paint, painting by, what's the name of that painter? Camera Zan Lempica. Lempica, yeah, Lempica. Um, uh, they've released all of her works with uh, Lempica covers. And this one, too, uh, is the same pagination as the, the, original, uh, the original hardcover version. And so if you uh, have or can get or can afford one of these uh, what are called hardcovers or quality trade paperback versions of the novel, we recommend that because especially for people who are reading for a second time, there's a, a fair amount of secondary literature on Atlas Shrugged that's pretty good now. And almost always it refers to the pagination in those editions. Uh, we're always going to use the pagination in those editions, although I'll mention other pagination too. And also they're just large and comfortable to read as comparison to the other paperbacks that we'll look at in a moment. Anyway, if you uh, want to know if your edition is, uh, is like that, um, uh, it'll either have, um, if it's the one that's on sale now, this centenary cover, or uh, if it's a non-American edition, it might have this uh, Art Deco cover. And if you turn to page 101, you'll see that the first uh, sentence on 101 is, did I hurt you as much as that, she asked. And is that what you're finding in yours? Did I hurt you as much as that, she asked. He looked astonished. The question and the smile were not those of a child. He answered, yes, if it pleases you. Yeah, so uh, if you're not sure if you have this edition, one of these editions, if it's a hardcover, it almost certainly is, or a trade paper, but look on page 101 and you'll see. Um, as, to, uh, as to other editions, in the paperback, there are a few different versions. Here's the, um, the first edition of the paperback. Uh, it was issued with some pretty different covers, pretty much variations of different colors of the same cover. And then in the 70s, it got issued with this kind of cover with, I always think of this as a globe in front of someone's eye. I don't really, um, anyway, with this, this bit of art on it. And um, so that was the original paperback pagination. And if you have that edition, you'll have one of these two covers, and you'll find that your page 101 begins next summer when Francisco came, she was 16. But at some point, I'm not sure exactly when, certainly by the mid-90s when I bought this copy, the pagination had changed. Uh, and it's the pagination that's in this 90s era copy 
that you'll find in the most of the mass market, that is small size paperbacks that are for sale these days. And on page 101 of that, you'll find, yes, said Daphne, without any astonishment. And the two covers pictured on either side of my head are the covers you're most likely to find in this current mass market paper version. So, and this is the version that we are giving out to people. Uh, we, we, we'd like to have given you the, the nicer one, but uh, we have a limited budget. We, we, but we do have 10 copies of the mass market edition, again, for students. And I haven't had too many uh, signups yet. Somebody just signed up named Jackie, who didn't give us her address. So Jackie, if you want uh, Jackie, a free copy of the book. You, how are we well, she might not be a talk? student. She might not be a you student. But address. in any case, if you're a student, uh, I'll show this one more time. Please, uh, and you want a free copy of this book, go to this address right here. Uh, Greg's going to put it up. Thank you, Greg. And all we need is your address and you know where you go to school. Let us know you're a student, and we will send you a, a free copy of 10 of these to give away by the end of the night. This is what uh, I think this is, the, I think, the version that we're going to be able to, or something close to this is the version that we're going to be sending to people. Um, this one I've read a few times, as you can see. Yeah. So just, just to review, um, we most recommend, if you can afford it, the hardcover version where 101, or trade paperback, where 101 begins, did I hurt you as much as that? But the version that I expect a lot of people will be reading uh, is the current mass market paperback, where 101 begins, yes, said Daphne. And whenever we uh, talk about the novel or point people to specific passages, we are going to try to provide page numbers for both, both of those two editions. And of course, there are other versions, too. Uh, ben, do you want to say anything about the electronic version? Yeah, and Angela on the chat actually asked a question about this. She said uh, uh, she is asking a question about the audio book. So, I mean, as long as it's a copy of Atlas Shrugged in one form or another, you can definitely use it for this group. It's just a question of whether you're going to be able to be on the same page as us. In the and of course, there's no page numbers in the audio book. Quite, yeah, yeah each as it week were. We're so, going to be announcing what we're reading in terms of the, the chapter number. So, part one, chapter one is what we're reading on the first. Uh, on the first week, and you'll be able to find that on the audiobook, no problem. But if somebody says, yeah. look so, at this passage on page 17, you know, they'll just have a hard time finding it. So I'll say a few things about about both the audiobook and about the Kindle. So I've got the, uh, the Kindle version of the book on my phone here. Uh, the glare usually makes it very hard to see. <laughs> yeah, it's not coming out. But... Um, uh, the, the pagination here is actually uh, fairly close to that of the of the hardcover, though that may be an artifact of the fact that this is page 101 is pretty early in the book. Um, you can get a Kindle edition through Amazon. Of course, you can get any of these through Amazon, uh, pretty much. And one thing I want to remind people about in connection with Kindle, especially, that I think is especially cool, is that... Angela knows that you can get audio versions from Amazon. Uh, Amazon owns audible.com, and so anything that's on Audible, you can also get through Amazon. By the way, we're not being paid by Amazon to do this. We're just uh, talking about our, our favorite ways of getting our hands on these books. But, Although if you uh, use smile.amazon.com, you can get a support a charity of your choice, and I have mine to support the Institute. That is true, but that's, <laughs> that, that's not why we're here. Um, so... But there's a way to actually link together your Amazon Kindle and your Audible audio version. So if you already buy the, if you buy the Kindle version, you can then buy the Audible audio version from Amazon at a discounted price from what it would ordinarily uh, cost on its own. That already is pretty cool. But what's even cooler is if you set your phone up in the same way, if you install the right kind of app, if you install the Audible app, uh, you can sync the two apps together in a way where you can do what they call immersive reading. And so you can watch the text of the Kindle version go by, and you can hear Christopher Hurt, who's the narrator for the Audible version, read it to you at the same time. And this, I think, is especially a good thing to know about since this is a very long book. And, I mean, some people, like Greg, they read the book, they spend three days in a row doing nothing but reading the book. Uh, 
I'm not that kind of person myself. I, I, I don't get, uh, even when I love the book, I can't do it uh, 24 hours, 48 hours straight. I have to put it down and come back to it over a long period of time. First time I read it, it took me, took me, I don't know, eight months, which is about as long as we're going to take to do this this time. And I think it would have been a lot faster if I had today's technology, if I were able to read it immersively by using both the Kindle and the audiobook. Another thing I like to do, uh, I'll maybe just turn on the audiobook and use a regular print version and listen to the uh, author, listen to the narrator, read it to me as I'm reading it with my eyes. And that makes it easy, like if, if you get distracted by something, you put down the book, but the story keeps playing uh, as you're walking about the house. And of course, the audible version is great if you're commuting or uh, otherwise doing chores. What so there's just a million different ways. Of, of, uh, of Amazon, the audio and uh, reading it sync is that if you like going back and forth, you listen to it in your commute, but when you're at home, you like reading. Um, it's a good way to read books. I read mm -hmm. books that way. I'm just taking a look at some of the more uh, some of the later comments that have come in, and yeah, so we're happy to take questions. Uh, you know, when we do this, we'll have all read some of the same uh, material, and we'll be set up to take substantive questions, and we'll be asking you guys questions and getting your ideas on things in the book. But um, for now, you guys didn't know we were coming on, and we didn't uh, have you prepare for this, but. We're happy to take any questions you guys have about the project or spoiler-free questions you might have about the book. And so far, we do have, uh, we, we've got four people so far who have who've asked for the free books. We've got six copies left. And I'll just remind everybody one more time, if you go to this website that Greg's about to show you, this is an offer for students uh, right here. I'll look myself. Uh, go to this website. And it's just a Google Docs form where you can enter your name and your address. Uh, where we can send you a copy of the book and, and also tell us what school you go to so that we know you're a student. These are just for students. So, yeah, uh, there's been some uh, chat in the live session here. What is the goal of this project, David asks. And Greg, you want to take a gander at that? Well, the goal is to help people enjoy and get a lot out of this novel. It's a um, novel that's a great intellectual experience and a great aesthetic experience for a lot of people. We think it's an experience that's best shared, uh, that bears repeating, and that people, that can be enhanced by talking it through with people as you do it. And we think it's an important book, a book that's meant a lot to both of us personally and to millions of other people. And uh, so we want to help people get the most out of it. And I think also we want to try to build a little bit more community around thinking and discussion of this book. Uh, we'll be together for eight months doing this. I expect some friendships will form and some intellectual bonds. And I think it's worth pointing out, Greg, that uh, while we are primarily, I think, intending to bring in first-time readers, it's not only for first-time readers. Uh, we certainly welcome experienced readers, people who've read it once or twice or many times before. Of course, they need to be careful not to give any spoilers. But I should mention, you know, the value for people who've read this before twofold. One is that it's it's fun, I think, to try to recreate the experience of reading it for the first time. And when you're restricting yourself to talking only about what first time readers know, you can you can simulate that to a certain extent. But but also. I think that this is a book that is not always well understood, even by the people who've read it before, even by the people who are fans of Ayn Rand's ideas, certainly by people who are critics of her ideas. And Greg and I have talked amongst ourselves a lot about what some of the common misunderstandings of the book are. Greg has written quite a bit uh, on this topic, not on the misunderstandings, but on you know uh, proper philosophical and literary analysis of the book. And so I think there's a lot to learn here, even for people who have read it before, who think that they know it all. I myself, you know, thought that I understood it the first time around and five readings later realized I was I, I was missing so much. Um, we have a few other questions. They're, they're really starting to come in now. And uh, so are the requests for free books. Uh, one person asked, how did we first a while to see that we were online? So uh, yeah. yeah. What 
one person asks, how did you guys first hear about Ayn Rand? I first heard about her through uh, a relative, I think, uh, when I was, this was back in the, I guess it was the early 90s. Um, he was someone I discussed politics with, and he was one of these people who um, has sort of gone through unusual, one unusual uh, political ideology after another, and was one of these sort of nomads, and he was, I think, a member of the Reform Party at the time. But I had come around to political views that reminded him uh, a bit of Rand, and he said, oh, you sound like Ayn Rand, and he handed me one of her books, and I was pretty young at the time. But that's the first time I heard about it. When I read that book, uh, and I liked it, that was one of her nonfiction books, but it didn't really go, and I didn't you know, go on and read much more after that. But then years later, when I was in college, I had a professor who was uh, had been a friend of Ayn Rand, actually. And also, I was hearing her name more and more in the culture in different contexts at that time. And because of that confluence of things, I then started reading a lot of her, and then got really into it, and read her fiction at that time, which was uh, really... Uh, Greg's referring to Alan Gotthelf, his, his former professor, with whom he did, uh, he edited uh, a book called The Companion to Ayn Rand, which is one of the places where you can find Greg's writings on this book. Uh, I'll, where did I first hear about Ayn Rand, I, I'm not sure for, for certain. I think that there probably were some people that I knew in high school who were reading the book. I don't remember which ones for the first time. There were a lot of people in my high school who were reading it for one reason or another. So I'm not sure where it started, but where it became, I think, especially prominent to me was when I was in debate in high school. I was in something called Lincoln-Douglas debate, and we debated philosophical topics, and I would start hearing more arguments that other debaters were using uh, where Rand was being quoted. And the first book of hers that I ever read was Philosophy Who Needs It, which is uh, an, an analysis of, of other philosophers that she disagrees with and uh, why she thinks we should care about what philosophers have to say and how they affect the world. And when I read it for the first time, I I... I didn't agree with her on pretty much anything, and the book didn't change my mind about that, but I, I was intrigued uh, by her view about why we needed to care about philosophy, and uh, one thing led to another. I eventually read The Fountainhead uh, because of the essay contest, and that was really what got me interested, and then I started reading everything else. We've got some well, other questions. It might be worth yeah? saying in connection with this, and in connection with the question of what's the goal of this project, is something that mm -hmm. the goal isn't. So the goal isn't to convince people that the ideas in Atlas Shrugged are true or get everybody right. to become objectivists, which is Ayn Rand's name for uh, her philosophy. Right. It's to get people reading and discussing a challenging novel. And uh, Ben and I are objectivists and we're people who really study this philosophy and live by it and think it's true. Um, and so, you know, our orientation will come out in how we address it. But we're hoping that we'll get people with different viewpoints and that we'll really have a discussion of it and uh, we'll reflect on why people experience this novel in different ways. And it's not, this isn't meant to be uh, convert everyone to uh, objectivism. It's meant to be uh, people who really love and take seriously a novel that's an important part of American culture, getting together and discussing it and trying to understand it and trying to enjoy it together and um, uh, and sharing it with uh, you know many people, some of them who haven't read it before, uh, hopefully a lot who haven't read it before. And Richard Clam, Ben, did you see his question about a group of students that popped up? On I was screen. getting there, but go ahead if you want to go for that first. Richard, actually, Clam, that was the next one I wanted. To, yeah, I guess he's a uh, Jeff Clam. He's Jeff Clam. Sorry, Mr. Clam, I've gotten you wrong. Um, your name. Vanished off my screen. You're a, a teacher, I gather, and you have a a group of students that read the novel every year. And uh, can they participate? Absolutely, we'd love to have students Absolutely. involved. We're we're hoping, you know, this discussion will be largely online, but we're hoping that in different places there will be some in-person discussions, and people can report back to the Facebook group about what questions came up there. Um, we're happy to have. We have the technology. We're still working out the kinks have yeah. people call into the show and talk to us live, and maybe some of your students can do that. Uh, we could even arrange for that beforehand. Um, Jeff, where are you? If you're and if you, where is your, where in the country are you? Where in the world? Yeah, yeah if you, and if, 
if you go, by the way, to the page that's on the screen right now, to that Facebook group, one of the things that's happening there a lot right now is that different people from different parts of the world and different regions and cities are, you know, asking, hey, anybody around here want to join a group with me where we're going to talk about this? We got people in New York. We got people in Bulgaria. We got people in uh, Los Angeles, especially. Uh, but they're all over the place, and we're hoping to bring as many people together. Uh, Jeff says he's in southern Idaho, so uh, maybe uh, Boise or Pocatello or Moscow, one of those places. But yeah, I mean, I uh, if you want to get on the group, we've got on the group in in that area. But it might be that there are other. I could look it up. But we'd be really happy to just have your class reading along and participating. Yeah. Let's see and what else we, we have. We here. hope they'll watch the show, uh, or this broadcast, whatever we're going to call it, and that uh, students will participate in the Facebook group. If you have in class discussions, maybe you can report back to us or encourage some of the students to report to us on what questions they're raising, what uh, thoughts they have on some of the questions we are raising. And Greg, we had another person still saying you should up your volume a little bit, but uh, I should mention that we still have uh, we still have a number of free copies of the book to give away. And we'll repeat the offer for anybody who's joining us right now. We're giving away 10 free copies of Atlas Shrugged for use, hopefully, in the Atlas project. And if you just go to this website right here, this is just a Google Docs form. And if you give us your address, your name, we will send you a free copy. Greg's putting that up on the screen again. It's intended for students, but uh, if uh, if you if you aren't a student and you're interested in a free copy, I will also refer you to a different website, freeobjectivistbooks.com, and maybe Greg can put the the other URL up, uh, for free objectivist books. But there we go. And that's not just for students, but uh, they give away a lot of books by Ayn Rand. So ask for Atlas Shrugged. Tell them that the Atlas Project sent you, and pretty good chance you'll you'll be able to get a book. Hopefully in time for September 2nd when this project is starting, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we have to rely on the U.S. Postal Service in, in certain cases here. That's problematic. Uh, someone's at best. thanking us for giving away free copies. We're we're happy to do it with the copies we have access to. They're they're provided by donors, so it's not our our personal generosity, of course. Um, although you know, I've donated to some of these. Um, and Raymond says, just buy the book. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. we're happy to give away the free books if we got them. But, uh, you know, for 12 or 13 bucks, it's a pretty good deal, uh, given the potential that it has to yeah. get you thinking. And I, and I do particularly maybe recommend getting the, if you can afford it, the trade paperback or the hardcover version. It's a little bit more, you know, I think the trade paperback is... <laughs> Maybe it's at fourteen dollars or something like that, and the 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 mass market paperbacks maybe five or six, but it's a lot more comfortable and convenient to read. And it um, for people who have read it before, and this is a favorite book of theirs, they might want to read more about it. It makes it a lot easier to access uh, what secondary literature there is on Atlas Shrugged. Greg, somebody wants to ask a political question on here. Do we want to talk about politics tonight? Well, I guess we could hear the question. What are they asking? Can you comment on what Ayn Rand and objectivism says about identity politics, especially in the context of the events in Charlottesville? Do we want to talk about that? Um, I mean, we do have a, a rule in the Facebook group that uh, allows for political discussion. Uh, and of course, Ayn Rand had very controversial political views. That's, that goes without saying. But the political discussion that will happen should be connected with one of the ideas that comes up in the course of the novel. And so we could probably, if we tried, Greg, come up with a way in which that current event deals with certain political dimensions of the novel. But to do that, we would probably have to violate the spoilers. We might have to the violate no spoilers. The spoilers. Rule. I'll yeah. just say, because so, it's such a significant event and so grave, I think we should just uh, acknowledge that it's a, a terrible tragedy, that, or a, more than a tragedy, a horror, that somebody was murdered. Um, and I, Ayn Rand would certainly agree with that. And I think um, she would be very concerned about the, the rise of 
uh, two things of, of, of really virulent and explicit racism that we're seeing now in a way that we haven't seen by these white nationalists uh, for some time express explicit, you know, this is our country for white people. And then, um, but also a lot of tribalism and collectivism on the part of the people, some of the people who are opposing them, who aren't saying um, we should be working to get to a place where race doesn't matter and it's a tragedy that it, it still does matter so much in American life, but who are um, also speaking in terms of wanting to separate and clan together uh, as races. Some of the opponents of these white nationalists are saying that. And the other thing and Al makes a good point, which is that uh, your own Brooke has been talking a lot about this recently on his radio show, and maybe it's best to just refer yeah. uh, viewers there yeah. for One more on what I think what I Rand would say, say is that the other thing that I think she'd find really troubling is that we're getting to a level where political disagreements um, and really severe ones and ideological disagreements between. Uh, you know, people who have very different views, and some of which views are, I think, really immoral views, uh, even on both sides, but where they're get, starting to get settled in the street with gangs yeah. acting with each other in physical terms, rather than through, uh, you know, debate and voting and a political process. And that is a really troubling trend. It was a trend that she saw happening in the late 60s and early 70s, and had a lot to write about, to say about then, and it kind of rolled back happily, but we... It seems to be happening again. So, well, I was going to say the same thing. The novel. And I mean, the, the one thing that I think it's safe to say about Atlas Shrugged that is connected here is that the book is about disintegrating America. Mm. And we'll leave it to the re as an exercise to the reader to think about the relevance uh, of that portrayal to, to current events today. Yaron's comments on this, I think, have been very in, insightful, and he did a, an episode yeah. of the Yaron Brook show just the other day on, on the, the Charlottesville event, so uh, people might want to check that out. Someone says that he's talking about it tonight as well, uh, so yaron oh, has been doing multiple broadcasts a week, so he may be doing it twice, which would make sense, uh, since it's, it's all anybody's talking about. Okay, uh, so maybe now is a good time because I'm seeing some evidence of people who are still just joining us as is in the nature of one of these broadcasts. Maybe now is a good time to repeat what this is all about and then go back to our offer. So one more time, my name is Ben Bayer and I'm a fellow with the Ayn Rand Institute. With me is Gregory Salmieri, who's a uh, fellow with the Anthem Foundation for Objectivist Scholarship and a, a lecturer at Rutgers University. And we are heading up something called the Atlas Project, which the, the Facebook group for which you can see displayed below us. If you join that group, you will have the opportunity to participate in a eight month long weekly chapter by chapter reading of Ayn Rand's magnum opus, Atlas Shrugged. This is in celebration of the 60th anniversary of the publication of Atlas Shrugged. And we're hoping to expose new readers to the book for the first time. We're hoping to help uh, people who've read the book before understand it at a deeper level, both philosophically and uh, from a literary perspective. And we also are hoping to bring those two groups of people together so that people who are reading it for the first time can uh, learn something from those who've read it before and so that the people who've read it before can try to re-experience what it's like to read it for the first time. This is a book that has affected a lot of people, changed a lot of people's lives, even when it hasn't changed their minds about philosophy. It, it still is uh, a kind of unprecedented aesthetic experience for a lot of people. It's a, it's a look into a completely different world that was truly original to Ayn Rand as, a, as, a, as an author. We could say a little bit more about maybe if we wanted to, Greg, the, what makes it a distinctive literary work. We talked about that in one of our earlier broadcasts. I don't know. Do you want to talk about that now? I'm not sure. We had the idea that we would try to keep this short, but then on the other hand, people are uh, just joining who hadn't been on before. So I'm not sure what the best way to proceed is. But it's How um, long have we been on? We've been on for 44 minutes and 39 seconds. Ah. In that case, I think we should probably start to wrap things up. So uh, maybe now is the last chance for me to tell you about the offer. 
And we do still have some free copies left uh, based on what I'm looking at on my spreadsheet here. But if you go to this website, and if you're a student, this is just a Google Docs form. If you give us your name and your address, we will mail you one of 10 free copies of Atlas Shrugged, which we hope you will use in participation with this Atlas project that we are heading up. And uh, just in case you're not a student, what's that? Linda Levy tells us she just joined. Ah, yes, but that was yes. And in case you're not a student and you still want a free copy of the book, and if you're so cheap that you don't want to buy one yourself, you can also check out freeobjectivistbooks.com uh, and tell them that the Atlas Project sent you. And hopefully, you'll be able to get a copy in time for September 2nd, which is when our inaugural episode will happen Saturday, September 2nd. That's going to happen at 8:30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5:30 p.m. Pacific time, if you go to the Facebook group below, you'll see that there is a link to, if you go under the files section of this website, you'll see a link to what's basically a course plan or a plan of the program going forward with a schedule, when we'll be reading which chapters when, more information on all the stuff that we talked about tonight, including recommended editions, recommended study guides. We'll probably be returning next week at the same time to do another test Facebook Live session talking about the project. I think, Greg, we are slated to talk about study resources, among other things. And so I think that's all we wanted to talk about. So I think we should start to sign off. Just a few reminders of things people can do to get involved. Um, join the Facebook group below. You'll get all the information there. Um, there's also, uh, if you go, even if you're not a student, right, if you fill out this, uh, this same form that's the request free books form it's also a way to get on our mailing list is that right then or are those separate that is now? yes that's correct the 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 form we're using right now to correct to collect addresses for the free books is also a mailing list form and right. so for people who are wondering to... what we're going to do with your mailing list we're basically going to be sending out a weekly email uh during the duration of the project where we will send you the discussion questions that we're talking about, and we'll send you reminders about upcoming sessions, and that's about it. And you'll also get that information on the, the Facebook group, but you know people right. like to get information in different ways. So uh, do both, do one or the other. Uh, but do join the Facebook group, because that's a place where you'll be able to participate live. Uh, some people, and one of the things that's going on on this Facebook group now is there's a lot of discussion about people in different areas saying, hey, is anybody in southern Idaho? Is anybody in uh, the Chicago area? Is anyone in Las Vegas? Is anyone in London? Uh, trying to get together some live in-person groups. And a few of those uh, are starting to percolate. So if you join that group, uh, if you're interested in looking for in-person discussions, in-person meetups to discuss Atlas, that's a place to try to start organizing them. And um, We'll be back online doing more of these kind of preview teaser test sessions talking about different issues related to Atlas. But the main uh, first big kickoff session talking about chapter one is on September 2nd. Uh, I live a little bit outside of New York City in Jersey City. And I'm going to be uh, with a group live in Manhattan discussing it on September 2nd. If you want to be in on that, uh, there's an, uh, an event listed under the Facebook group you could find and sign up. and. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to fit everyone who's interested in the room we've got planned for this. And uh, Ben's in Louisiana. I think you might have some people with you, too. Yes. We're working on that. So New Orleans, uh, if, if we're not flooded by then. New Orleans, if they're not flooded, yeah. So uh, those are things you guys can do to get involved. Uh, get a copy of the book. If you're a student, request one here. And we'll see you online, and we'll see you on Facebook. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bye, everyone.